Good morning, fellow Toastmasters and all of you potential Toastmasters out there. Welcome to the show. This is Wake Up with Toastmasters. I am your program quality director, Ken Richardson, and with me is my lovely co-host, distinguished Toastmaster and past district director, Phyllis Trevi. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning, Ken, and good morning to our public out there. Remember, we are live and we would love to answer your questions today. So please make a comment. And even if you're watching us tomorrow, this afternoon, next week, make a comment because those comments are seen by the club pro director. And we will answer your questions no matter when you send them to us. Absolutely. We want to hear from you. We want to make sure that the show is providing value uh, to our members. So if you want to be on the show, or if you have a suggestion for a topic you'd like to see us cover, please get in touch and let us know because we, uh, this show is really about Toastmasters and it's uh, something that we want to make useful. Uh, we want to spread the word about our district and all of the wonderful things that we're doing. And we want to, to learn about you as a member of District 115. Tell us about your Toastmaster journey. Tell us about your club. What's going on in your club? Do you have any special events coming up that you would like us to promote? So get in touch. Uh, leave it. We do check the comments periodically. You'll see me sort of looking off, try, trying to find the right page uh, that I'm checking comments. Uh, so make sure, and if you're watching later, make a comment because we do go back and look at those. Now, the other day on Tuesday, we were talking about contests and we were looking at some of the resources that are available to our members and they're really quite comprehensive. We're going to continue that discussion today and we're going to focus on judging contests because Phyllis is really an expert <laughs> in the field. Uh, she's been district chief judge a number of times and she served in in that capacity at the division level, the area level, and the district level. And so we're international. Gonna, and, oh, that's right, that's right, and international. So she knows judging uh, about as well as she knows mentoring, which is pretty darn good. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see if I can, let's see if it stayed where it's supposed to. La, 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 la. I'm looking for my uh, Toastmasters International landing page. Let me go find that real quick. There we go. Then we'll get to where we want to be. I think. All right. <clears throat> now, by now, this should be a familiar sight to all of our viewers and to all Toastmasters. This is the landing page, the new landing page for Toastmasters International. And this is where uh, you, you, you've got to learn to navigate from this page to wherever it is that you're, you're looking. The other day, we talked about going under the resources tabs, because remember, under the new graphical interface, if you will, we have these tiles that take us to different locations in the page, and they're supposed to be more specific to you. For example, I have District Central, which I use a lot to do reporting and what have you. And then across the, stop, the top, we also have drop down menus, just as, as the old website. And where we want to look today is at resources. So I'm going to click on that. And this is, uh, uh, should be hopefully ringing a bell if you've watched Tuesday's program. And you see another drop down menu here. And one we want to focus on is speech contests. So I'm going to click on that. Takes it a minute to get going. And on Tuesday, we went through a lot of the issues uh, and a lot of the menu options on this left side of, your, of the screen here, uh, menu options. What I wanna do today though, is show you where you can find instantly some terrific resources. Let's say if you scroll down here and you see the title is Speech Contest Resources. Now for international, if you click on that, or any of them really, here's what pops up. This is marvelous. This is a, uh, a, com uh, a complete contest in a downloadable file. 
you can click download, which I've already done, and I'll show you what this looks like. So once you download it, then you get a zip file. Did that pop up okay? Has it yet? Okay, I may have to refresh my screen here. So you don't see the uh, the pop up on my screen? No, I see okay. it down there at the bottom. Okay, let me stop sharing a minute. And then go back to that. And see if it'll we say we ah. love technology. We, we do, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now can you see that? Uh, well, no, that's not the right thing, I don't think. It should be, it should look like a series of uh, files okay. in okay. a computer yeah, folder. It is. Yeah. Okay, good. Then that's what you, that's what you should be seeing. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this is everything that's in that downloadable file. And let me just describe a little bit of it here. And then we're going to pull up and focus on judging for Phyllis. Uh, for example, if you have a uh, certificate, that's here. First place, second place, third place. Uh, so that's all in this file. Let me pull up just one. See if you can see it. Can you see that, Phyllis? Did that pop up okay? No, it did nope. not pop up. Uh, you know, it's uh, you have to sort of reshare every time. That's very frustrating. Let's see if it. Sorry. No, it's not you. Okay. It's one of those technology things. <clears throat> okay, now can you see the speech there contest? There we go. Sure. Okay. All right. This is just an example of the uh, material that is copied in that file for every speech contest. So this is a certificate awarded to the first place winner. There's one for second place, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm going to close this out. Uh, la, 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 la. Let's see here. Bear with me a second here. I'm going to take a minute. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that stops sharing. We're going to do this again. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's so... All right, it keeps dumping me out. And it's because when I'm trying to open a file, it, it'll let me switch to that file, but then it dumps me out again. But that's okay. Uh, my message to our viewers here is to review what's in this file. So I'm not going to go through everything, but I wanna point out that it has, it's a complete package. It has a results form that you need to move to the next level. So, so if you're, in an area contest, you're gonna fill out the results form and pass that on to the division. Judges certificate of eligibility, that's we're gonna open that in a minute. There's a speech contest rule book, <clears throat> uh, speech contest uh, record sheet, tally sheets, everything you want, cert speaker certificate of eligibility. So it's really a complete package of everything you need all you have to do is download uh, the, this, this compressed file, open it up, and then print whatever it is you need. So I'm gonna pull up, I know this is probably not going to work on the first time, but I've learned that. The judge's certificate of eligibility. My guess is you can't see that, right, Phyllis? Well, it still has a circle on it, so maybe we give it another second or two. Okay, I think probably what's gonna be easier nope. Yeah, it's for me to stop sharing that. There's <laughs> gotta be an easier way to do this. I just haven't figured out the technology yet, but let's try this again. Let's see if I can find what I'm looking for. Here we go. Now, <clears throat> you should be able say, to- Do you hear that out there, you technical people? We need a visitation. <laughs> we do, we do. We need some, uh, we need some tech help or, or a quick lesson on what is it that I'm doing incorrectly that's causing this to happen. Uh, but I think now you can see it, right? Yes. Okay, excellent. Uh, and you can see this is uh, the judge's certificate of eligibility and the code of ethics. And I'm gonna go over part of it and then I'm gonna turn it over to Phyllis. Uh, some of the technical stuff that, uh, just the paperwork, and then we'll talk about eligibility. Uh, first of all, which contest are you talking about? Well, in this, particular instance, it's the international. So you just click the box 
And what level? Is this the club level, area, division, district, or the region quarterfinal, semifinal, or world championship? I love the fact that this is the same uh, certificate all the way through. So let's say we're at the area level. Now I'm going to turn this over to you, Phyllis, and pull this up so you can tell us about eligibility, because I know you have been through this, <clears throat> and there have been some changes, but Go ahead, if you if you don't mind, to talk about what it takes to be a judge and what really makes a good judge. What does it take to be a judge? Willingness to listen. You gotta listen to what people are saying, what your contestants are actually saying. And then you have a judge's sheet and you actually use what you have heard against the criteria for that particular contest. So at the contest level, if you're a paid member, everybody votes in the club other than the contestants. It doesn't matter how many are there or you're missing, you know, everybody can vote. And I will tell you that at a club contest, if you call it a contest, you must continue with all of the rules from Toastmasters International. But if you call it a showcase, then you can decide who was the best speaker and not depend upon the time. If you call it a contest and your best speaker goes over time, then he cannot represent you. When I say he, I mean he, she, or whatever. <laughs> but I, 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 in my time, 50 years ago, we went to school, we used he for everything. Sorry about that, <laughs> folks. <laughs> we are okay. of a certain age. <laughs> yes, we, we are. And in our childhood, if we didn't know whether it was male or female, we used male. So sorry about that, folks. It'll just come out naturally. But at the area division in the district, you know, you have to have been paid member for like six months. And this is a rule that I have dictated wrongly for the last few years because international changed it. When I first started, you had to have been a member for six months of a club in good standing. The words club in good standing are now missing. That is only for contestants, those few words. As long as you're a paid member, even if your club doesn't have the eight, which makes them a viable club, uh, it's you can still be a judge. Yet you have committed completed six speeches in the Confident Communication Manual. I believe that this probably has been eliminated because International is now saying completion of level one and two of any PAP. So this is a thing that they have not updated their material on. Well, you know I've seen it many places. Yeah, where well, I, oh, you have sorry. to have completed level two PATH in Pathways Learning Experience, and it has to be submitted and approved by International. You cannot just say, oh, I've done level two. It has to have been processed. So you know, I, think, shows. I think they haven't changed this on here. And I wonder, because I, this is the judging, if to be yeah. a judge. <clears throat> to be a judge, as you pointed I think out, that's okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I want to sort of question this here because, as you said, the club need not be in good standing, but yeah. the member must to be a judge. That's different from if you are a contestant. If mm -hmm. you are a contestant, it says that both the member and the club must be in good standing. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if item B here under uh, section two where it talks about you know, the competent communication or uh, levels one and two. 
I wonder if that's okay in the judging, and we could ask this question because this was all supposed to have been updated, because uh, similarly, the, the contestants, they've taken away the competent communication name and only focused on you have to be either completed level one and level two or a DTM. Yeah. So my question here would be, is this different uh, from, are the qualifications different to be a judge versus a contestant? And maybe that's where some of the confusion comes in. Well, I think that that's true. And we know that if you are competing in anything <laughs> other than the international, the international is the only one that requires level one and two in pathways. Anybody else can compete in any of the contests, even if they've just been in Toastmasters for a day, you can still compete. There's no restrictions on your um, educational level in Toastmasters. Yeah, so you're wonder. possibly right, but I think that this has kind of a shaky information. And if <laughs> I were the chief judge, I'd probably uh, send a message off to contests at Toastmasters International or Toastmasters.org. So it's contest at Toastmasters.org and ask the question. They'll get back with you probably within three or four days and give you their ruling. And you'll have it in <laughs> writing. And I always like to have if have it in writing. I'm glad that you mentioned that because when there when questions do arise, you can rely on not only experts within your district, but if in this case something that is stated by TI, you can get clarification through okay. TI, and they have uh, different areas like like you mentioned, contests at Toastmasters.org. And that's the appropriate one. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will answer that question. Now, the other thing I wanted to go down here uh, is to the code of ethics to start on this. And I'd like you to address uh, some of these points just so people are aware uh, that when you agree to be a judge, you're going to be expected to know in general what these codes of what the code of ethics is and sign that you will comply. So you wanna talk about that a little bit, Phyllis? That's very true. I go over all of this. In fact, my judges briefing is probably a mini training session for judges. And what I tell them is that they are signing a contract and that they should uphold the contract. To go into detail, read the fine print, if I haven't talked about it, but I do that they signed this contract. And that is a reason about one of the things is that you keep your information to yourself. You do not divulge what happened. And anybody that comes up to you, you can say, I signed a contract not to talk about my judging. And so if you need somebody to evaluate your speech, Please talk to somebody other than a judge. So it kind of gives them a reason not to talk about it and a reason to go over these code of ethics. We talk about the core values. Well, I think everybody should know them, but they don't. And they start out with integrity. You know, and read over these rules and regulations and the judge's form, that you are using integrity to do the judging with. Um, bias, my goodness. I had somebody tell me, well, why would you have a judge from each club if we weren't supposed to vote for our club member? <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's like people get ideas. I don't think anybody tells them these ideas. They just get these ideas. So, no, you've got to go over these things with them and explain to them about bias. I will not consider any contestants age, race, color, creed. Yeah, and it goes on and on to absolutely detailed as to why you should 
uh, be unbiased and not look at those things. We're strictly looking at the speech, and in this case, the speech content and how it was delivered. There are a few other things, but those two items are what makes up the balance of the uh, ballot. So think about those things to be uh, just indiscriminate, you know, not to use discrimination in any form. And you do not consider time, of course not. That's why we have two timers. Do I see many people with their phones out? Yes. And I'm hoping that they do not let that influence them. Uh, as I say, what they want to be judging on is the content and the delivery style. Yeah, we'll um, go over that in a moment, but I'm going to move. Is it okay to move down to the next page? Sure. Okay, so you can get the rest of those. There you go. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and let's see what you would like to, to mention here. This is the rest of the uh, the uh, ethics. Oh, yes. Now, as say, when it's a club contest, you know, everybody but the contestants are judges. When it's an area contest, there are judges from each club. So naturally, you are going to be in a club with one of the contestants. That makes sense, right? We get clubs. Uh, each club gives has a uh, judge, and each club has a contestant. So therefore, they're the same. But when we move on to division and district and regional, all the way up, you cannot have a judge that is in the same club as a contestant, okay? I was at a district conference, district contest, and there was one person in the room that was not in a club with the contestant in the evening program. And he had been a contestant in the afternoon program. And it took me, you know, you're not in the same contest. You're at the same venue, but you're not in the same contest. And you're not in a club that this contestant is in. You need to help me out and be a judge so that your division has a judge in the contest. And of course, as always, we have Toastmasters that say yes, but that's it. And, and I actually, I had some conflict also in District 33 because they are close to another district. <coughs> and the judge was trying to tell me that they were in the same club, but it was in another district. Well, it doesn't matter where this other club is. If you are a club, member uh, that this, of the same club where a contestant, any contestant is a member, you cannot be a judge. So it works out, try and not to be biased, no conflict of interest with the contestants. Yes, if we've seen you fighting, rolling out in the highway, we're not going to let you be a judge. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. and that, as you mentioned, uh, you have to certify that. This is the, the bottom line here. <laughs> Excuse me to say I'm, I certify yeah. that I'm eligible and that I will uphold the judge's code of ethics. Yes, I pledge that what I tell you is the truth and I will be fair and honest and use integrity. And I'm going to sign my name here because I believe that I can do this work. Exactly. And I'm going to sit down here if they have a date. Because, uh, see, this was revised uh, in March of 2022. So I don't know if they had any, because we were talking earlier about yeah. it, because uh, it seemed to, to contradict what we've seen in other documents. And I think that's uh, something we see sometimes 
you know, I know I, it happens to me. I'm reading like, wait a minute, competent communicator. I thought that took, they took that out, but it appears they only took it out of the contestant, not the judge. Now, I know we're kind of running. We've got about five minutes left. I'm going to stop sharing that. And just real quickly, let me see if I can pull up a, uh, a ballot so that we can take a look at that. Bear with me a minute here, if you would. Uh, la, 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 la. And let me find a ballot real quickly so we can we can go over there, rule book. I think this is it. Yes. I know you can't see that yet, but bear with me. Is and I a will book we're getting or a ballot. It's a ballot. It's going to be a ballot. So let me exit that. Try share screen again. I'm sorry for jumping through all these hoops, but I just wanted to real quickly have you talk a little bit about the ballot. Can you see that now? We should be good. Absolutely. Absolutely. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Yes. Do you want so to talk about this? What we talked about is that in the judging, this is criteria that you're going to be using. And you want to listen intently. I usually always give out uh, blank pieces of paper for people to make notes on if they want to during the speech. And then they can go back and um, evaluate, you know, put your scores in uh, during the minute of silence. But we're talking 50% of your ballot is contact, content, you know, your development effectiveness and value. And the value only gets 15 points, but they're strong 15 points. Uh, the appearance, the body language, the delivery style, 30 points. So every ballot turns out to be 100%. So then there's down to language, appropriateness and correctness. There are some people that will deliver a speech that has some language in it. And if you don't give them any points for this particular section, definitely they probably will not turn up in your top three. We always state that the judge's ballot has to be signed and your name has to be printed. We prefer that you do not put any extra markings on here other than first, second, and third place. If there are three or more contestants, you cannot just mark first place. You have to do all three. So you have to decide first, second, and third. Now, if there are only two contestants, well, then first and second. But people think that they could turn in a ballad with just the winner on it, that it makes a difference. Well, it does not make a difference. Yeah, that so, gets disqualified, yeah. I think. So you have to, if there are three or more, then we need to have three listed. And then you detach that. You can see here the top part that where you're doing your, your, your scoring. That's something that you keep. Nobody else needs to see that. You just Absolutely. need to... We, we definitely detach. tell them when you just detach the ballad, which is your bottom part, your worksheet should go in your purse, your pocket, not thrown out on the table. It is surprising how people will notice who the judges are and come by and look for that. Yes, they do. <laughs> and do not just throw it in a waste can. Take it home with you, please. Yeah, we're running a little bit. We've got about two minutes left. I just want to point out that on the back of your ballot, if you are a judge, there is a description of the judging criteria that Phyllis just went over and another copy of the judge's code of ethics. So there's no reason if you are a judge, you're going to get a briefing and you've got documentation on the ballot itself of what the expectations are and how that ballot is to be completed. So I think that is uh, pretty much covers what we were talking about. Anything else you want to add there, Phyllis? Yep. Other than you can be a judge, volunteer. Yes, and I do hope that people will volunteer to be a judge because 
we do need uh, you know judges here. I'm going to look and see if we have any comments. Uh, first comes the contestant. We want them all to do contested. If they don't win their club contest, then volunteer to be a judge. See how it works. Exactly. Exactly. Be be engaged. I think is what the message I would like to uh, to leave our audience with. Get involved if you are, whether you're a contestant or whether you want to be a helper, like a judge or a vote counter. Uh, contact your area director, let them know that you're available, and then volunteer. That's what it's all about. Well, that that takes us to 6.30, fellas. So we, we're out of time again. It goes by so quickly. <laughs> the only announcements I want to make is uh, just the routine to remind our viewers that Wake Up With Toastmasters is on at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, send You can send me an email if you would like to be a guest and I will respond and we'll get it uh, get it worked out to the day that best suits your needs. This Saturday, we have the uh, district executive committee and district officer training. Uh, if you need information on that, please send me an email. And of course, on Saturday evening, we have educational enrichment. Phyllis is gonna be one of our featured instructors. She's gonna be talking about mentoring, which is one of her many passions. And Guy Dawson, another past district director, is going to be talking about closing the sale when it comes to membership, converting potential members to actual members. And that's something very, very important that all of us uh, need to learn. We will also, of course, have our uh, Pathways Help Desk that's going to be manned by Dana Wall Oakley. I will be giving a new member orientation and an introduction to Pathways. So if you need information on any of those things, please send me an email. Did I leave anything out there, Phyllis? No, but I will tell your audience that I did have problems with the reminder email that you sent out getting the registration. Okay. The registration worked really well on the newsletter, so I went back there. But the other okay. one wasn't working for me there, you know, was just wasn't going anywhere. I think oh. what I, I, uh, I yeah, I, I've had some problems. If it's a, a JPEG versus a PDF, uh, that's that where it? the problem is. And so, okay, but well, you can still use that uh, QR code. Uh, that works. I did, I did get that worked out. So I got to figure a way to do that better to make it more convenient for folks. <laughs> well, everybody should have got the newsletter and that one worked perfectly well for me. Good. All right. All right, then we're going to say have a great day, everyone. Thank you for watching, either in real time or later. And we will see you next. Phyllis and I will be back on Tuesday. So have a great weekend and stay safe. We'll see you back here next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.